Hey everyone, it's Mark from Flight Sim School. If you're thinking of learning an A320 in Flight Sim, you might be wondering which one you should actually pick since there are technically four different versions of this plane available right now. And today we're gonna to be covering the differences between them at a very high level so that you can figure out which one is best for you. Let's start from the beginning though, and when Flight Sim first shipped, it came with an A320neo that was very bare bones, and although you can still use it today, it's missing a ton of features and it's going to be retired once 2024 comes out, so it's best to avoid using it for those reasons. Sim Update 15 brought us a new free version of the A320neo with the CFM Leap engines, which was actually coded by INI Builds, and it's a definite step up from the original that we were just talking about. Before we go any further, it's worth mentioning that the A320 V2 has generated a fair bit of noise since its release with complaints that it's buggy and it has poor performance. And while there is definitely some truth to that, it's also possible to fly full flights without any issues whatsoever with it. And I've actually experienced both of these situations myself as well. So what that means, if you're on Xbox and you want to fly an A320, the only real option is going to be the A320 V2 moving forward. And I think really it's best to experiment for yourself to see if you run into any of the major showstoppers, which are the instruments freezing up or the low frames per second that make it really hard to fly at times. On PCs where we have a few more options, especially with regards to the Neo, because we also have the Fly-by-Wire A32NX, which is ahead of the INI in some aspects, but there are also a few categories where the INI can still eke out a win over it. So we're going to be focusing on those key differentiating features for the rest of the video, and then you can decide when you're going to use each one. If you're not familiar with the Fly-by-Wire project, it was actually one of the first quality airliners that we had in Flight Sim 2020, building on the default 320 and improving a lot of its systems. And it's now its own fully independent plane with the CFM Leap engines as well. The Phoenix A320, on the other hand, is an implementation of the A320 CEO, or current engine option, and it has both the Leap engines and the long-awaited IAE engines, which actually work a little bit differently and they definitely sound a lot cooler than the Leaps. The Phoenix is widely regarded as one of, if not the most complete payware plane that you can get right now. It truly is fantastic from almost every single point of view. So although we're mostly going to be differentiating between the INI and the fly-by-wire projects throughout the rest of the video, we'll still look at how things are done in the Phoenix just as a point of reference which so you can get an idea of if you want to invest in it right away. We're going to start off by looking at physical modeling of the planes from the exterior to the interior, and in no particular order, we're going to start with the fly-by-wire. The external model still looks pretty defaulty. There is zero dirt or grime and everything looks brand new, almost like it just rolled out for its delivery flight. But overall, it does get the job done. And considering Fly-by-Wire is almost always improving this project, I'm sure they'll also update these textures at some point as well. As you can see, the fly-by-wire doesn't actually have a cabin yet either. However, you do have a couple of windows that you can use for proper wing views. And again, I do believe it will eventually get a full cabin, especially if you consider the fact that the upcoming A380 is going to have a full cabin. I'm sure they'll find a way to port that back into the A320 as well. With regards to the INI, the exterior textures do have a bit more life to them and you can see there's some accumulated dirt in places and wear and tear on some of the components. So overall, it's hard to have any major complaints about it. The INI does have a cabin, but it's only available for PC as a separate download from the marketplace due to performance reasons with the airplane. And if you find yourself having low frame rates on PC, one of the first things to try is to actually uninstall that extension and see if that helps out because it also adds 4K textures to the flight deck as well. When it comes to the Phoenix, as you would expect for a $70 add-on, everything looks top-notch. From the dirt lines on the fuselage to the details on the struts of the landing gear, it all looks incredible. And you've probably even seen some side-by-side -side pictures where people take a real plane and put it next to the Phoenix and you can barely tell the difference. The cabin in the Phoenix looks amazing as well, and even if you zoom in on any of the textures, they stay crisp and clean all the time. And the only way I could see them improving upon this is by adding more interactive things to do either with the IFE or the galley. As for the flight deck, again, unsurprisingly, the Phoenix has an edge over the other two. In some lighting conditions, you would swear you're looking at a real flight deck. 
all the screens look realistic and how they turn on and operate and the overhead especially I find looks really amazing. I don't think there's much to pick between the fly-by-wire and the INI textures here though. The only thing is that there are a few more bells and whistles implemented in the cockpit of the INI, like the opening windows and the tray table, but those things are all sort of secondary anyways and they don't matter all that much. That leads us into talking about systems and depth of simulation, which again the Phoenix wins hands down with almost every system simulated and implemented as it would be in the real world from the FMS to all the circuit breakers that are functional, a full failure system, and even little things like window shades and seat adjustments are modeled too. Surprisingly though, that extra depth that the Phoenix has doesn't increase the difficulty level of learning it all that much, and if you start with either of the Neos first, you'll be able to transition to the Phoenix pretty easily, and that's literally the path that I took as well. The Fly-By-Wire team have recently released the first cut of their FMS V2 to the early release channel, but even then this is one area where the INI still has a leg up in a couple of places, even though the gap is getting smaller with every release of the Fly-By-Wire. Some of those extra features of the INI include the ability to operate the two MIGDUs separately, which helps you with multitasking in busy parts of a flight. Being able to fly curved legs on RNAV approaches, which are often called RF legs, and they're becoming more and more common in procedures, so it's also a good one to be able to do. And also having a secondary flight plan as well, although if you're a beginner, you're probably not going to use that feature straight away. On top of that, the INI also has a very basic weather radar within the limitations of what can be done in flight sim, of course. But one thing the INI doesn't have is terrain radar, which from what I read on their Discord server is apparently due to performance issues with the default systems in flight sim. The fly-by-wire does have a terrain radar, but it doesn't have a weather radar. So really, it's a pick and choose situation here. In terms of performance and FPS, it's important to keep in mind that high fidelity airliners like these are heavy on the CPU and the GPU, so you'll never get the frame rate that you get with GA planes. And even though there are some things you can do to improve it, like reducing your overall graphics settings, it's not necessarily going to help all that much. From the dozen or so flights that I've done with the INI, its frames per second are a bit lower than what I get in the Phoenix and the fly-by-wire, but it's nothing too drastic that really affects my experience. However, at Payware airports is where the INI seems to be a lot heavier and it can turn into almost a slideshow at times, which is pretty unfortunate. Hopefully though, they can sort all of this out. And again, I encourage you to try it for yourself because you could have a completely different experience and they may have fixed a lot of these issues by the time you're watching the video as well. As for the sounds, this is probably a personal preference, but I think this is one place where the fly-by-wire gives Phoenix a run for its money. They are both fantastic sound sets, don't get me wrong, but they're also pretty different and the way I'd describe the fly-by-wire sounds is they're a lot bolder and more pronounced than the Phoenix. The INI sounds are okay in the flight deck, although sometimes I felt like they were looping a little bit too much, especially on the descent, and I've had really weird behavior with the exterior sounds at times too, so overall this is one area where the fly-by-wire really outshines them. The INI has the easiest installation of the three, since it comes installed by default with Sim Update 15, although if you're on PC, make sure that you go download that cabin and enhance textures from the marketplace, because it doesn't come with it by default. The downside of having this plane in the marketplace though is that it's also tied to it for updates which can take a fair bit of time to trickle out due to the approval process that it has to go through, which is unfortunate especially at launch when there are bound to be issues. The fly-by-wires installer runs pretty smoothly and it's kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of updates because they can push them out whenever needed. And if you use the development version, you get access to all of the latest features really quickly with the downside being that you need to remember to go update the plane to get the latest updates and fixes before every flight. The Phoenix installs more like traditional software where you download the setup executable and install it, which provides you with the application that it needs to run alongside the airplane, as well as their livery management tool that makes customizing your A320 pretty simple. With regards to liveries for the fly-by-wire and the INI, your best bet is to check flightsim.to, which will likely have whatever you're looking for. In terms of stability, the Phoenix is rock solid, and whether you pick the stable or the development branch of the fly-by-wire, the odds of having issues are pretty low as well. 
for the INI, like I mentioned earlier, there are definitely some issues that still need to be ironed out as of the time I'm recording this, but I've also flown a bunch of full flights with no issues as well, so it's a little bit hit or miss on if you'll experience problems or not, which is why it's important to try it for yourself. Both the INI and the fly-by-wire are free. In the first case, Microsoft paid the bill for you so they could have a default payware quality plane in Flight Sim. And in the case of the fly-by-wire, it's an open source project. So if you find yourself liking it, you should definitely consider contributing to it in one way or another to provide some value for value. The Phoenix costs 50 pounds, 65 USD or 85 Canadian, depending on how you look at it, which puts it at or near the top in terms of payware planes. But as we saw, you get the whole package with that thing from modeling to systems depth and even all the little bells and whistles. So it's going to be really up to you to decide if that extra depth is worth the cost for you. As we saw, there are pros and cons to both of the NEOs, be it the fly-by-wire or the INI, so I've put together this short list of advantages to each of them, and as things change, either with bug fixes or improvements to either of them, I'll update this table in the description of the video so that you can have an up-to-date image of what's what. For a beginner to airliners, I'd recommend starting with the fly-by-wire, mostly because of how stable the project is, because like that you won't be wondering if what's happening is a bug or if it's just an error that you've made. But once you've got a hang of it, definitely try the INI just to get a feel for how different they are. Long term though, I'll likely end up flying the fly-by-wire and the Phoenix the most since the fly-by-wire has more upwards potential and the Phoenix because it's just the best airliner experience available in flight sim right now. I'm going to leave you today with a link to a video where I covered the best and worst airliners for beginners if you haven't decided on which way you want to go yet. And please make sure to like the video if you learned something useful today and subscribe as well so you can get more similar content.